Right, so last chapter we touched on these steering columns and of course we have our GH one here and GK power steering one here. There are a lot of similarities, there's also quite a few differences in that the GK wheel is closer to the dash, it's a tiny bit shorter in this area here. It's shorter on that end for the steering box, you can see how much shorter it is there. Assuming that this is the area which is common to both, the mounting and height adjuster bracket which for all accounts it, it does appear to be identical the gh1 has different bracketing here and here and that's for your steering column shroud it's a bit non-negotiable how that goes because the cowl that covers up the combination switch and your hazards up here and everything is a predetermined depth from where the dash pad comes down so those brackets have to be right whether we use either column um, we have to ascertain that. Now there are a few other differences here. Union mounting planes look the same. The splines look the same here. The splines also look the same here. And they look like they've got a 12 125 thread. I'm not sure what that is. I haven't really looked at it too closely, but they're all the same. The tape is the same and so on and so forth. The difference is the GH uses a rubber mounted needle roller for a bearing, which is just pushed into a blank tube. And the GK doesn't. It's got a circlet there with a ball bearing there and you can see that collar there has been rounded uh, to allow for the bearing case so it can't slip down. The bottom is the same for both. You have your rubber encased. I'm assuming that's a needle roller in there and I'm taking it off. And what happens if I do... Hang on. Well, there's the GH. And again we have Yes, a rubber in case one. That's the collapsible section of the column there. So what we have is we've got basically 95 millimeters poking out through the top. Uh, if we stick that where the seal's been running, we have the same poking out through the top from this area here, from where that collar is. This one from the flat part of the tube. So what I'd like to do the easiest way is probably taking the column off and just putting that on but as we said the shroud will not fit um, because there is a length difference and we have to cater for all that so that end has to be identical funny angle so you probably can't see it there's a tack weld on this here the other one uses a left hand thread somewhere where is it here and a bolt a through bolt with a left hand thread this one actually uses a nut that's been welded on so, not a biggie. That's about level there. Now, the funny thing is, this column here is shorter at this end. But the actual column over, the, the protrusion is 95mm from that collar. Most of the difference is down at the other end with the steering box mounts. So, I think what, what I'd like to do is take that circlip off. This has a circlip there, that's just on a bush. That bush there I was talking about before. And I want to see if I can set that up. So, we leave, um, we're using that tube with that column and I'm shooting for the protrusion at the other side being the same. Now it's all determined by where this is. There's a little bit of room there. There's, you know, for a I think they're like a, a three eighths, but eight millimeter bolts that go through there. They're, well, they're probably a ten actually. But what I need to do with that bearing mounted is go from the center line of this to the end of the shaft with five hundred and twenty millimeters. Maybe 518, but yeah, we'll call it 520. So, what's the other? So, you're looking at about 60 millimeters difference. Hang on, I've got to push that in a bit further. The other one's 578. So, I'm going to take this column out. I want to have a look at it. Oh, and at this end, we're probably 95, maybe 96. And yet from down here, we're on a, probably 103. But if I just get out the way of that, that's about the same from that flat area there. So I need to take that off and have a look. Even a couple of mil out at this end is going to mean the steering shroud's going to drag on the back of the wheel and that sort of thing. See it in there. Oh, that's not too bad. All right, so I can take that off. That thrust washer will come off. I'll leave them over here somewhere. Then there's a collar. And that little guy should come out. So, if I pop him out from the other side, never hit the end of the thread. I'm going to put the nut on the end so it's flush. Maybe a little bit recessed in it, just use a soft hammer. Now, 
I'm just doing bit by bit. It's going to let go soon. Although, it doesn't look like I've done this any favours down the bottom. Hang on a minute, I'm going to have to dig that out. From what I can see, this part here is absolutely identical, and that's the critical bit. Um, all the difference is in that end, which is what we want to see. Because I'm con contemplating using this tube, the GH column, I want to make sure the lock mechanism, which I can't see where it is, doesn't foul with anything, so the diameters of these are the same. To get these off, you've got to... Um, I'd probably use a small cold chisel in there. They're a snap-off bolt head, so they break off at a predetermined um, torque, if you know what I mean, thereby making these impossible to remove in a very short time, which is what you need to do to steal the car. So, what we're looking at, there's a couple of differences here. Where's that rag? In a second. Uh, in that we've got provision for a different type of bearing, hence this, but that's only a modification of the original column. If I get a caliper, there is a thickness difference there. But this is the bit that I'm worried about here. That's where the lock is. About the same amount, perhaps a quarter mil. Otherwise, that looks to be identical in the length of it. The way it's set up, absolutely everything. It's only a very, very small amount wider. So I reckon, let me just try and pop that needle roller out. See if we can get him on, and it might even be worth getting a slightly different one, but I'm going to take this out and see if I can get him on there, which there is a tiny bit of difference. We have pretty much dead on 21. I'll tell you what, it is absolutely minuscule. It's right on 21 millimetres. That's GK. GH is smaller, I think. Yes, it is. I'm going to call that 20.7. That's 20.77. And that's 21. Right, options. What are our options? I've had a look at this. I've considered what I've got here. Uh, what do we got? Right, so we're not going to use that at all. I don't want it. I'm not interested in it. We are going to use the original one. Now, this one has an encased needle roller. For the end of the shaft, the longer one, you can see there it runs down. The bearing is pretty well flogged down. It feels very loose on there. And it's encased in this rubber sleeve. Now, the rubber's soft. It will still allow a little bit of movement in the column, and that's not roadworthy. Um, having said that, I haven't measured the slack, so I'm not really sure, but that's the problem with guy. This GK shaft is a third of a millimetre bigger in diameter. It's dirty. We can clean that up. That's not a problem. The bearing won't go over it. Okay, so we can either stick that in the lathe and just hone it down with paper and water. I wouldn't try and cut it. It's hardened, and I wouldn't want heat getting into it. That being said, I don't want to take the uni off the other end, and of course if I have this on a through chuck, that's going to whack around at the other end and it's, we don't want to go there, I'm not interested in that. Uh, the original GK column had a roller bearing. Uh, the roller bearing, it's been crimped, or rolled in here to stop the bearing moving sort of further down, and it's also been rolled at the end, so that's non-replaceable, we can't do much with that. So this is what I'm thinking, Delrin, Acetal. I can make a bush and you have good clearance, minimal clearance, but good clearance here. This stuff is wonderful. You turn on a lathe, they keep rattling on about this stuff. With a shoulder on it, so it goes into the column. This column's not rolled, but there's a, can we see that? There's a shoulder in there. It's sort of secured in there. So we can make it the right depth. We can have it protruding the same as what the bush does, like that, and it will support the shaft. Now Ford used bushes, I made a steering column bush for the Galaxy, the wheel would move and the indicators wouldn't self cancel properly, and I machined it very thin, that's all I needed, and it worked perfectly for the five years I had the car. Uh, so what we need to do, work out the depth of it, which is pretty easy. And I reckon that's going to be a nice, easy, simple solution. 
it's supported by another bush down the bottom and I think that's gonna work fine right so we're giving this a clean with scotch grind it's perfect that's good that's all I used it for I might re-secure these are reusable cable ties I'm just going to tie this up here because I don't want the wiring sort of put under any duress there so I'll just re-tie this down here somewhere and I'll go into work early tomorrow I think and have a go at that so before I cut this I just want to have all that bush sorted and I reckon we're going to have a winner on our hand right, here we go we have our GH column I've put that height adjuster bracket back on we've docked the bottom and taken that off that's the bit that had overspray but that doesn't matter we've taken that off we only use one small bit of acetyl acetyl or darwin whatever you want to call it machinable plastic we've stuck it in a lathe we've still got this spare bit here and all richard graham stuff over there which is cool and that is designed to snugly fit and there's no fore and aft movement which i'm really really happy about yet it still slides it's a very dense material so what we've done is we've got that right and also the outer diameter which is a machete which is a an interference fit there's a ledge down there so i've done it to a predetermined depth so i think we can knock that in let's give that a tap That turns beautifully. Hang on a sec, let me just plug him in the back. Right, so here we go. We've put it in and it's turning free as a bird. It's good as gold. If we pop the key out, we got a steering lock, so it's even better. So we've got to now put the combination switch on. I might give that a Kleenex. It looks pretty crap, pretty dirty. Um, but I'm not going to put the column in yet because I want to stick the steering box in first. Uh, and that way, it's going to be easier to sort of mount ma the um, align the splines up, if you know what I mean. So that can go on the bottom. I'll put it on after because I can't be bothered now. But for the meantime, it is finished. Right, so we are now repairing a steering horn ring. I haven't got that very well set up. Just a moment. Um, if you remember, this was... I just had that wiring coming out, going through the steering wheel and that was insulated with electrical tape so i'm just going to pop the new one it's yellow so it doesn't really matter that much i'm just going to solder that on there sometimes you have to add solder before you solder if you know what i mean to melt the old stuff just stick a bit of electric uh, what do you call this heat shrink on there There we go. Give that a clean and it can go back together. I'm just giving this a bit of a wipe over with some 1200 wet just to clean it up. I have to get the old grease off with some thinner. Absolutely past its use by. I don't want to go too far into it though. But we want a reliable horn connection. So I think we're going to get it with this. And that looks fairly good. So that's how it's supposed to look. So I can mount that onto the steering wheel and I think we're halfway done. Uh, I'll just down like that. And then that is a bit better, isn't it? So how does that go? Does that go through those ones as well? Let me figure it out because I've not the foggiest what I'm doing. So I can't remember I pulled this apart a long time ago. Alright, so those screws go through. Then we've got this one here, which goes through those two there. I remember. And then I've got to terminate that with a spade terminal to go into that. And then we're good. Ooh, ooh. Laugh it. The Mitzi screws aren't tightening up properly, so I've got some genuine Ford XC Falcon ones from the spares bin, and they're doing a sterling job. Beautiful. One left. And they're good. They're just a very similar type screw. They're the original ones and they're flogged out. The XC ones are perhaps a tiny bit broader and a tiny bit longer. Um, 
and we need this to stay there. Make it nice and tight, which is cool. Okay. So then we're gonna sit this guy on, and then we've got to wire it. God, I'm not doing this well. Oh, great. So yeah, I always take that blue thing off. And I've tinned the wire. I might just get some heat shrinky. Actually, I don't think I need to return it. I think we'll just squeeze the bugger on, hey? As it's crap sold, I'm running low on the good stuff. But this will flow. Flowing well. All throughout. And we'll just, it's the wrong size, but it's all I've got. So we can just trap that under there. Might use a different size screw, put a little washer there or something. Doesn't look that cool, it's pretty warm. Continuity test. The ring on the back. Yep. And is the horn going to work? Beautiful. That's the wheel all done. That just slips over the top when we're finished. We'll give it a bit of a wash. And that's the wheel done. I've got to clean it. Whoa, I've got to clean it again because I've got all my dirty marks all over it. But that's in much better nick than it was. So I'll clean that box. I'll put the box in and then the column and this can go in there. So I've used some dirty old garage thinner and a toothbrush to clean the bulk of the muck up this. There's just a tiny bit of throat clean left. I'm just going to go into some of these little corners. Get that out now. And we've got it so that the... <laughs> I'm out now. Oh well, that was good work last so We got most of it off anyway, 99% of it I'd say. Um, so I think I'm going to tape up a few pieces on it. particular dislike for painted bolts but I'm not going to do anything about this. Um, the only one I'm going to mask off is this top adjuster. Um, just because there's no actual real reason for it. Normally I would paint parts then assemble. I'm not going to do it with this. I don't want to pull it apart. I want to leave it just as it is. I will however mask off that funky little label and the rest of them I'm just going to paint. And I'm going to use a rattle can, which I never normally use rattle cans, but I do keep them for this sort of thing. Yeah, get out of there. Come on, what are you doing? This is really cheap. And I'm only going to dust this on. This is really horrible rubbish stuff. I was watching, there was another guy using the same stuff. And he's doing, I'm watching it on YouTube last night. And he's doing, what is it? Matchbox car restoration. It's like, are you kidding me? So anyway, um, the guy got, was it? 600,000 views in a month. Do you believe that? So anyhow, um, I thought to myself, it reminded me of a crappy video I made about an interior. I think it was the starlet seats and um, you had to clean your seats for a dollar. And I was meant to take that video off because I thought, well, well, I always knew it was rubbish. Anyway, um, it keeps earning money, or it used to. It's sort of stopped now. So I never took it off for that reason because I was getting sort of paid for it or with it. Anyway, um, you know what we should do? We should do... <laughs> I just did one episode about five Matchbox cars and paint them with stuff like nail polish. You can thin it down, it's just enamel. Those things aren't even etched, they're just painted in enamel. Anyway, this guy did the job. Getting lots of good comments. A really poor attempt at humour, which made him look like more of a psychopath. And the results were really average, I thought. I mean, I thought I, what I was doing on this segment was average, but God. Anyway, what do you reckon for a bit of a laugh, we do something like that? Pretty easy. You've got a body, you've got the base plate, and you've got a plastic thing, which is the seats. That's it. <laughs> I don't reckon you can go wrong with that. That's enamel. And that's why it sticks to anything, and that's why they paint those little things in stuff like this. Mm, is that enough, do you think? I think that'll be enough. I'm doing it in satin because it's thin and I don't want to have to pile the paint on with a gloss because there's no point. Not only that, this is really heavy. So when you're going to pick it up, it'll feel touch dry. You'll pick it up and I'll tell you what, your fingers will go through the paint and stick to it. So I think that'll do. Job done. All right, let's have a look at the steering box. It looks rattle canned and crap because it is. I didn't take any of the old paint off so you can see a run there from the previous paint job. 
that's just screwed into the side of the trestle here. I can't stand painted bolts. I really don't like them, but you know what? That's going to be fine. That's going to be absolutely fine. We'll stick it in the car and we should be good. So, what say we put the steering box in before the paint dries? This is a bad idea. Oh, gee whiz, that was even better. Oh, get in there. <laughs> oh, that is a bad idea. Terribly bad. Right. Which way are the bolts go? Right, well that's all bolted in and tightened up. Okay, the uh, wheel arch is a little bit of black, um, deadna type stuff. There's this horrible looking thing which is rather poorly painted, and that goes over there, but it doesn't seem to fit. Uh, I'm going to have to modify it. The steering box is broader here, but that's not a big deal. Inside the car we've got the thing pointing in the right direction. There's no mark on it. The Fords have a mark on them, on the end of the spine, which you line up, but thankfully that seems to be pointing in the right spot, which I'd be surprised if it didn't, but we can stick the column in now. Okay, we've got a little modified column. I'm going to try and pop it straight onto the spline because I can see. I can see it like that. And I don't know if it's in all the way because this is a mile out, so let me pop that there and go and see what the devil's going on. I've given myself a fright because it would line up, only the rear bolts would line up, and it's because I had the just around the wrong way. And because I thought it was on the left, and it's not, it's on the right, so I've got to um, sort of swing that around again. But having said that, it all seems to be quite good. So, <clears throat> it looks like everything lines up really, really well, which is such a bonus. Um, so I'm just going to go around and I'm going to tighten these up. I'm going to pull this out from this guy. And the adjusters are on the other side, from what I can see. Because this channeling here is different, you can see it. And the one for the knob is wider, because it's got a large square section on the base of it. So. I'm just going to tighten these up and I'll be back. Right, combination switch. I've given it a rudimentary clean. This was the reason I turbocharged the other car because the Sigma that I had broke one. And then I went to Eastside Mitsubishi and I was something like $275 plus tax back then. So of course I went to the Wreckers, $45, but they had a turbocharger there. And it was $1,000 for the whole kit. And I said, I have 800, would you take that? And they said, yes. So I've got an indicator switch and a turbocharger. So what I'm going to do is going to make sure this is going to work. Um, I need my other screwdriver. I don't like this one. I need a. I need to get my other one. There's a bit of movement in there, I think, isn't there? Anyway, I am going to plug all this back. And where are the plugs? There's one there. And a whole lot of stereo ones, and apparently the cassette deck doesn't work, which is a bit of a pain in the neck. But we can fix that, I'm pretty sure. So I'm plug all these back in. That being one. Might strap these up. Let me go around. And these are reusable leads, which are great. Right, so where are we at? We have, there's all this friggin' filler dust in here, which is hard to get off. Well, it's not hard to get off, it just sort of sticks to everything. I'm doing, sort of filling the sides, and that's all got to be rubbed back, so there shouldn't be too much filler there. Um, steering bag is in, look at that, huh? It's all good. That grommet there looks a bit sus, but I can't, I've tried to muck around with that. But it's just sort of pressed itself into that position, so there's not much I can do about it. The main thing is we don't have overspray in the box. It all looks pretty good. Um, I can't stand overspray and things like that. People respray engine bays with steering boxes in, I hate it. But anyway, we've got that in. Um, steering wheel, steering column, shroud will have to come out now. Indicator, cancels. I don't want to turn it too fast because there's fluid in the box, so that's good. And, I'm going to take the key out. 
we got a steering wheel. So that's cool. Well, it's good news, hey? What do you think? Do you like it? I like it. Um, right, so that's done for now. So the next thing is to get into the body, get all that bottom colour painted and primed and all that sort of business. I've still got to do the um, the repair on the scuttle, that one there, and secure those lines and just bits and pieces. I had uh, my knickers in a twist over this business. I'm going to take those off again, but I've got exhaust, heat shield, uh, what do you call it, blame proof paint or whatever it is. That'll be fine for that. Uh, just black and it'll make it look fresher. I don't want to go through all the rigmarole of getting plating done and all that sort of stuff. Wiper motor can go in once I've painted this, or painted that, sorry, then um, I can put the wiper swivel pivot things in and put that plate on there and washer jets and all that sort of stuff. So it's looking good, I think. I don't, don't have any problems with it. Seems to be going as planned. I have been doing some body work and also uh, refitted the drag link. I just wanted to see everything fitted on there. Pitman arm is identical. I sort of measured all that and had a look at it. Um, and you can see the drag link down there. I've just licked over it with black paint and got finger marks all over it. So I sort of touched it up in there in situ and got overspray on the drive and my jack. But who cares? It doesn't matter at all. So that's all looking good. That's only sort of pinned in there temporarily to check that it's all parallel and all looking good and working properly and all that sort of thing. Uh, what I'm wondering about is this. This guy here. I'm wearing my slippers. Uh, this is the cooler for the power steering. Now I wasn't sure if it went up there, which looks like it fits quite well, but it doesn't. Looking at the GK information, from what I can see, it goes in there. Now I don't want, that seems to fit quite well, but I don't want to hang down in front of that cross member. That's the first place it's going to get damaged. I would sooner have it a little bit higher up. It attains its thing there, so we get to the bumper bolts and off to the steering thing. So, mm, thinking about it. I can modify that to fit quite well. I'm just not sure I want it hanging down like that. Now the alternative to using that sort of loopy power steering cooler is to use a PWR. Now this one is a transmission cooler for the XD. And I've got one of them in this XW and I had one in the Galaxy and I think they're great. They're um, a proper radiator type cooler. Let's see if I can just get it out for you. Unboxing bit. Here it is here. Now that is a great bit of kit. I use these to bypass the, um, the what do you call it? The cooler and the radiator. I don't like the idea that they can rupture and send coolant through your transmission. Now, you can get little ones of these, and I'm thinking it might be better just using one of those, low down on the Sigma's radiator for the power steering. This, uh, it, took, it took a little while to get this one because it's got 516 barbs. Normally these ones, the big ones, have a 3 8 barb. So the Sigma would use something along the lines of a 3 8 or 10 millimeter, 9 point something mil, whatever, um, hose for the power steering. That wouldn't flow enough. So you'd need to get one that's quite small with the big barbs. I've not looked into it. If I can find a good way of mounting the cooler that's with it, I'll probably go with that. But that is another option and they're not very expensive. I think this one was $130. This is for the XB, as I said, and it's a video I've got coming up. But the small ones are a heck of a lot cheaper, so we'll suck it and see. Mmm. Cup of tea and biscuit while I contemplate something. Doesn't get easier than that, does it? What I want to do is try something out. Just a moment. A little bit of sort of sad news. I've had to pull the pin on the 2.6 engine. It's a GK one, therefore a wide block, because it's manual. What have we got there? 4805. And mine is a narrow block, therefore the gearbox won't fit. That's all right, that's cool, that's the same. And some people on forums and so forth say the tunnel has to be modified, and I'm just not going there. I'm not doing that to this car, I've already started putting it together. So, and there's also a shifter problem in that the earlier ones have the shifter further forward, 3501. Where the later ones obviously have it further back. That should fit. So what we're stuck with doing is putting the original engine back, which doesn't bother me at all. Saves me some money and where's my tea? Cheers, Mr. Lawton. There's a tea bag hanging out. 
Um, yeah, so we're going to put the two litre back. Um, there's cross member differences apparently, which is no big deal. You can get a cross member in a tail shaft. But the shifter thing, some people say you just take the plate off the Japanese one and get a shorter one and it moves it forward. But other people are saying, no, you need to change the innards around that extension housing part. And the Japanese gearbox for a two litre apparently fits. I don't know why, off an earlier car, but finding one of them is going to be murder. So I'm going with this. So here's our pulley. This is an air conditioning power steering one. And here's the original one, which I've just buzzed off, which is like, yeah, it's just that. So let's see if we can get this thing to fit. I've given this pulley a clean up. We're just going to run around with there with a bit of grease. Um, with a semi clean finger. Mm -hmm. And we haven't cleaned that up very well, but there's nothing going to drop in because I've just been around the perimeter with a rag. And where's the keyway? The keyway's there. We are hoping. This is gonna fit. Oh, you sausage, look at that. Right, so, just stick that back in. And just zap him up. There you go. Right. Engine still turns. Oh, I've got compression. Oh, that sounds reasonably good. Right, so the power steering pump fits on here. It goes through there. There is a eight millimeter thread, and the 2.6 wide has a 10 millimeter thread, I think. I might be wrong, which is which. It's got another one there anyhow, and it might be an eight or a 10, I can't remember. And this isn't adequate, just having those two there. I'm not gonna hang it off there, nor there. So we need to brace it. So I'm gonna have a bracket, and make a bracket to go right the way back. But what I'm really interested in is whether or not this is gonna bloody well fit. Now, it does fit, but is it going to work? So I'm just going to pop that on and just see where these pulleys line up and all that sort of stuff because I could be making a lot more work for myself. In saying that though, I am going to fit it because I want to. Let's see if we can get the belt on first and it's going to line up. So I'm tipping it to that inner one. Oh, that does look good. Oh, no, maybe it doesn't. Whatever the case, that looks fairly good. Um, and that pulley there lines up with that, which is quite good. Okay, dokie. Let's just nip that up a little bit. So we know it's all flush and cool. And we've just ganged a couple of washers on with some six mil bolts. Pardon me. And Now, if for some unknown reason the alternator doesn't reach, which it will, but if it doesn't, that is dead easy to fix. But that looks great. That's all lining up properly. So, I'm stoked with that. I have not a complaint in the world. Um, I'll just take that bracket off and we'll have another look. Isn't that a delightful looking little pump? It's kind of old school. I like it. I've never seen one like that. Um, most likely Japanese. These were fitted to scorpions, that sort of thing, but you never see them on Sigmas. But people have asked me why I want power steering on this. The steering on these things is so heavy and revolting. Not like a little four-cylinder car should be. Um, I'm just going to put that to the side. And I'm take this bracket off and I want to talk about that. The original GK bolt was given to us. This one here may be a fraction longer, but it is, I'll use that. So here's the bracket. It's really, really simple. Lovely to adjust. All good. The issue is, of course, that's the one, I think. Right, okay, so that's the one that's a 10 millimeter thread, but it's only 8 millimeter in this. The 8 millimeter one here isn't on this engine. So, what we need to do is cut this here along the back, put a bit of 3 mil uh, flat bar in. We're going to weld it in here, we're going to weld it on the outside, on here, maybe even on the faces there, and then we can brace it properly. I just don't think it's kosher to stick that in without being braced correctly. Anyhow, Hope you've enjoyed this. Take extra good care of your classic and I'll see you around. Bye.